District of Conservation is sponsored by CFACT. To learn more about our sponsor, head over to CFACT.org. Thank you so much for listening. Welcome to District of Conservation. I'm your host, Gabriella Hoffman. This podcast offers a sober examination into all things hunting, fishing, shooting sports, energy, environment, and the public policy surrounding it. And this podcast also specializes in original interviews that you won't hear elsewhere. Here's what I have for you today. A happy Giving Tuesday to all of you, dear listeners. This is going to be a more lighthearted episode than our typical focus, where we focus on combating bad policy and also highlighting good policy. But this is going to be short and brief on what my personal takes are for organizations you should support on Giving Tuesday. I'm going to list off maybe five to ten options. You may be familiar, maybe they're first just coming on your radar, but I hope you take away the information that I dispense and check out the organizations, maybe offer them some monetary support, follow them on social media, and get involved. So here's what I have for you guys today on organizations to support. First and foremost, I have to plug in CFACT, who sponsors this show. They focus on free market environmentalism. They let me go crazy on the conservation portfolio as well with Conservation Nation. I do a lot to help supplement their conservation and public lands outreach and research. They've been around for several decades. They are leading public policy battles, important public policy battles. So if you can lend them your support on Giving Tuesday, definitely try to do that in the aforementioned ways that I specified. I also want to talk about the Professional Outdoor Media Association. We talk about POMA all the time. Separate from my work with CFACT, I do a lot of outdoor freelance writing, and POMA has helped elevate me to great heights. I was able to do a lot of writing when I first started out as a member, first as an associate member, then a voting member, and now as a board member and voting member simultaneously. And so in the four years that I've been involved, they've really helped kind of catapult my writing career even more than it was previously. But in outdoor media and outdoor journalism, POMA is one of the best organizations that can help you reach the next level. We specialize in listservs. We have different events and offerings, webinars, and we've been around for 15 years. So POMA is a nonprofit organization that I definitely recommend you sign up for or get involved with, or maybe you know someone who's a budding outdoor communicator. We appeal to people in traditional and new media. We're not just limited to beat reporting. We also encompass people who are social media influencers, people who are videographers, people who create content, podcasts. Uh, They also do traditional writing and reporting as well. So we cover the gamut in outer communications. Great organization to support. Here's a round off of different nonprofits I've mentioned or their leaders who have come onto the podcast. Of course, I have to plug in Safari Club International, their tagline, First for Hunters. They do a lot on the legal front and the legislative front to highlight bills, good and bad, for sportsmen and women. And the name may scare you a little bit, but that does not and should not preclude you from supporting them. Safari is well-rounded. It's all-encompassing. It's being outdoors and enjoying things. They focus a lot on North America, not just abroad and internationally speaking. And so I've been a member for a good number of years. I've been involved somewhat locally. Safari Club, SEI, is a great organization to support and join. I also have membership in the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. If you like elk hunting and elk conservation efforts, they're a great group to support as well. I've really followed and been supportive of the elk reintroduction efforts here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. I've highlighted it here on the podcast, and I've reported it in the field, gone down to southwestern Virginia, talked about the different hunt that is made possible through groups like RMEF, the local stakeholders, the public officials from the State Wildlife Agency, and other important people who have helped bring about the elk in Virginia. Now we just had our first successful lottery hunt down in those three counties where the elk reside and live. So RMF is great. There's also Sportsman's Alliance. We love having them on too. They're similar to Safari Club, but a little different, I think, in some ways, but they all work together as well. And we've had Brian Lynn and previously Bruce, uh, who used to work with them on the program. And so they've done a lot. They fight a lot of the kind of hidden battles, even beyond the legislative front. They're the ones who have been on the forefront of exposing these movements by radical preservationists. Most recently, Brian had talked about at the Wildlife Society where they've welcomed a lot of these anti-hunting groups into the fold and given them a platform and what that means and also have followed some lawsuits, sue and settle lawsuits and other kind of behind the scenes stuff that you don't often see from different groups 
as well. So they're really on the cutting edge. Sportsman's Alliance is great. There's also a Congressional Sportsman's Foundation. They work with lawmakers in a bipartisan fashion to educate people about sportsmen's issues, legislation, different efforts. They're based here in the D.C. area, also do phenomenal work. Some kind of uh, non-political involved or rather more educational uh, outfits that I would love to recommend you support. There's Howl for Wildlife. We've brought on some of the leaders from that organization there. They've done great stuff to energize hunters, small and big, to get involved in legislative fights. They've worked with Sportsman's Alliance, SCI, and other groups to kind of tag team on support and follow and track what is happening with the hijacking of wildlife agencies, loss of bear hunts, and other incremental steps that have been taken to undermine hunting at the state and also federal level. So they're great. Blood Origins is also a phenomenal storytelling outfit. I got to meet Robbie Kroger actually for the first time in person after years of correspondence at another nonprofit that I'm going to mention event that I just participated in. And they've been really trying to humanize hunters and showcase that it's not just about the kill or the harvest, but it's so much more. And Blood Origins just became a nonprofit not too long ago. So they're great. The Hunter Recruitment Project, which I just alluded to, I just did a ladies hunt with them and I'm kind of an advanced beginner hunter, and you guys have probably heard me talk about this a few episodes ago. I went on this women's hunting trip with Hunter Recruitment Project run by three phenomenal guys who have really interesting backgrounds across uh, companies, restaurants, different kind of outdoor industry adjacent niches, and they have this nonprofit, and this is their, I think, ninth hunt of this sort, and so I got to interact with a lot of ladies. I'm going to even throw in a little bit of monetary support to them too. And I'm currently awaiting my deer, my processed deer. Hopefully I'll still get to get some. I'm going to get an update on that and see when that is happening because there has been a backload. But the Hunter Recruitment Project is great, especially when it comes to recruitment, retention, reactivation efforts. They're doing phenomenal work. Those three guys who lead the organization in getting newish hunters, newer hunters, and even advanced hunters kind of pairing them two together to go to the field to learn how to hunt and really enjoy the outdoors. So I like those interactive type of settings as well. And gosh, there's so many nonprofits. I could list off so many more. There are many that I also like that I probably haven't mentioned, but you guys have to do your own research. This is just kind of my own personal feelings, and I'm going to do a separate Giving Tuesday post on kind of my preferred, generally speaking, nonprofits in addition to these ones that I've mentioned that go beyond conservation and where I do cover conservation as well. But these are kind of the endemic organizations, energy conservation-wise, wildlife conservation-wise, that I think are very important to mention. I hope you do throw your support behind the aforementioned groups, get involved, learn about them, and share these resources with interested people. There are huge opportunities to get more people into the field. I even forgot to mention some fishing organizations. My goodness, there are so many too. But great opportunity to use Giving Tuesday to highlight these kind of under-the-radar organizations or underappreciated organizations that do need your support. Support from individuals goes a long way in supporting and actuating change and and making these organizations have an impact. So whatever you can do within the kindness of your heart, if you feel inclined, be sure to support these organizations. All the resources will be mentioned in the show notes for those of you interested in connecting with any representatives, getting involved locally and the like. So I hope this inspires you to give back to charity because in America, we are very, very fortunate to be able to be in a position most of the time to give back and help those who could benefit from a leg up or to give back to the community. That's what a free market capitalist society does. And we do it really well, much to the chagrin of people who dislike this country. So anyway, everyone, happy hunting and happy fishing. Stay tuned for more episodes. We have some great guests coming up into the holiday season. So things are not slowing down ahead of the new year. Thanks for listening to District of Conservation. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you haven't already, make sure you find us on your preferred podcast player. We largely circulate on Apple, Spotify, and countless others, but those are our two big podcast platforms we want to push. Make sure you're subscribed there, especially on Apple. If you like the podcast a lot, go leave us some reviews. We'd be more than grateful to get some five-star reviews from you guys. 
Moreover, we are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and a little bit on YouTube. We don't populate there, but connect with us on social media. Find me personally on social media with blue check marks. Super easy to find, and I would love to hear your feedback and know who you'd like to see on the podcast. Thanks for listening to District of Conservation. Stay tuned for the next episode.